So we are recording now. And uh, this is a, a meeting of the Closure Data Recur Group. And today we'll have a discussion of DataJo, data a new library for data processing uh, and that we will hear about in a moment. And we have uh, a few a few people of the of the lab who is involved in which is involved in this project and in a moment we'll hear about uh, all all the members here and uh, yeah so maybe let us begin by telling a bit us about ourselves um, I'm Daniel I uh, usually do statistics and geography and some community building in the closure community and would you like to tell about yourself yeah thank you Daniel for the the invitation much appreciated um it's great to be back here um after we before we presented uh Cloud Jask, another library so today we're gonna talk about um data tour um so a brief self-introduction so my name is matt uh, bühlmeier i am uh, teaching finance and uh, fintech at the hku business school and um so here uh, we're gonna talk about some uh, one key project um of uh, my RA team, uh, and uh, we'll also briefly touch upon a few other uh, projects. Yeah, so I think that's all about me, and uh, maybe let's uh, pass the time to Yang Mingtian. So I'm Yang Mingtian, I'm uh, currently an uh, undergraduate student at the uh, HKU Department of Computer Science, and I am also a, a RA of uh, uh, Dr. Billy Mars team, and I uh, developed uh, participated in the development of uh, data tour. And so I'm uh, 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 very grateful for having such a great opportunity to uh, present uh, our project here. Thank you so much. So maybe uh, Zhao Jie Yi. Oh, oh so. I'm Zhao Jie Yi, uh, also a new RA in Dr. Matt's team, and I'm a year three student of computer science in HKU. And um, here, thanks to the invitation of Dr. Matt, I'm here to learn something about the closure and rele uh, relevant knowledge. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, it is so wonderful to have uh, three people of, of this uh, HKU group. Uh, and, um, and now we see that uh, Jeremy did join the call and that is wonderful. And Jeremy, we just started uh, introducing ourselves. And if you wish uh, to tell about yourself, then uh, I, I think it would be nice because your project is kind of related. Uh, and But uh, only if you find it comfortable to say something about yourself. Um, yeah, uh, Jeremy, who is here with us, uh, um, is involved in the XTDB project, and so that that is one reason I'm so glad to 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 meet again. Um, and yeah, maybe we'll chat about it afterwards. And yeah, so I guess we can uh, begin in a moment. And um, and as we said, we are recording, but afterwards we may do some editing if anybody wishes to change anything. And yeah, should we begin with the uh, discussing the group and what you do, what do you think? Sure. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Okay, so um, uh, so we are a, a, a small group uh, of doing, you know, developing closure in financial contexts and also business contexts in, in general. Uh, so we have a, a GitHub um, page where we can find, you can find all different kinds of, um, of our projects. Um, it's called Clojure-Finance. Uh, and um, one of these uh, projects is uh, is a data drawer. Uh, so uh, Yang Mingtian will uh, talk more about this uh, project uh, later. Um, so maybe to give you a brief uh, sort of overview of uh, of our group. So uh, in this group, I work, work mostly, uh, but not exclusively with uh, undergraduate computer science students. And uh, we, you know, we uh, we want to develop software somewhere at the intersection of uh, finance, fintech, uh, data science, um, AI, machine learning, these kind of things. Um, so uh, you can, you know, feel free to check out the um, closure dash finance uh, page on GitHub. Uh, you can see a lot of um, projects there. One of them is, uh, which is maybe the most well-known project, 
uh, which we have um, discussed before, presented here before, uh, thanks to the kind invitation of Daniel, uh, was Clojask. Uh, so Clojask is basically a, um, it's sort of like pandas in Python or uh, maybe data table, but it can uh, handle larger than uh, memory sized data sets. So it sort of streams the data through uh, the memory rather than loading everything into memory. Um, and it tries to really be minimalistic in that sense that it holds just a really small uh, part of it um, in memory. So it's it's really, it's it's pretty fast actually. Um, and uh, it really uses very, very, it has a very small uh, memory footprint. Uh, so that's maybe the most well-known uh, one that we have done so far. Um, and then, so later we, uh, you know, we, we, we kept sort of thinking about uh, what other things we could do. And um, so we got interested in DSLs uh, for in, in Clojure. Um, so where you can basically uh, rewrite or create some sort of new syntax and um, make it suitable to, you know, whatever uh, problem you're facing, whatever programming uh, problem you're facing. And uh, so, so we started uh, to work on uh, data tour. So data tour is basically a, a DSL for uh, for data science, with a few backends. Uh, so one of them is Clojask, uh, obviously, uh, our own. But uh, then we also have uh, have several other backends. Um, so uh, Yang Mingtian will uh, talk more about uh, them as well uh, later. Um, and uh, so originally this was uh, started, this project by uh, Perry Choi. So he was uh, one of the undergraduate students and um, he sort of kick-started uh, the data tool project. Um, and uh, however, later he uh, retired from, from our team because we have uh, sort of like a rolling uh, membership, uh, you know, students, they, um, they graduate and, and so forth. So they cannot uh, stay uh, in the project uh, for, for too long. Um, and subsequently, uh, it was picked up by uh, Yang Mingtian, uh, who continued the work on uh, data tour uh, and uh, developed it to to where it is right now, basically with a you know with a website and uh, some documentation, and um, he even made some some patches to some of the, you know the other backends or one of the backends uh, to be precise, and, and uh, so so I think he took it to uh, to the next level. Um, so, so we're looking forward to uh, to hear uh, more from from him about uh, about that. Um, and before I hand over to him, I just want to uh, briefly mention that. Uh, so, in general, um, we are very very open uh, to collaboration uh, with with other people doing closure. Um, or, you know, if you have any issues with some of our software or any you know bugs or or some documentation is not clear or uh, whatever it may be, uh, please feel free to reach out to us, and uh, you know we're happy to 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 get in in more contact with the community and uh, and uh, keep developing our our project. It's based on the community feedback and maybe even community contributions. Yeah. So um, without further ado, um, again a big thanks to to Daniel for inviting us here, and uh, then I'll pass the time to uh, Yang Mingtian. Uh, so can you see my screen now? Yes. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, so today I'm going to present uh data jar, uh DSL extension to existing data processing libraries. And uh, we also have a website, so here is the link and here is the QR code. Uh, so uh, maybe I can uh, put the link in the chat box. Uh, sorry. That's okay, I can put it in the... Oh, okay, done already. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so here is the overview. So DataJure is a domain specific language extension developed at HQ Business School for existing data processing libraries. So... Uh, here is the uh, his uh, key features. So uh, it wraps data operations into a single query and it supports multiple libraries in the closure ecosystem as its backend. And today's presentation will mainly uh, consist of four parts. So the first part is about the backends. 
uh, and the second part is about our motivation of creating such a project. Uh, so we are mainly covered two questions. The first one is who should use it, and the second one is how will they benefit from uh, data drill. And the third part is uh, about the design of uh, data drill. Uh, we are mainly cover its basic syntax. And the last part is about its usage. Uh, and finally, we are also uh, have maybe have a, a live demo. And yeah, so let's move on. So currently, uh, data drill have uh, support four backends. Uh, the first one is tech.ml the data set. Uh, it's a tabular data processing library similar to pandas. And the second one is table cloth. So it's a, a data frame manipulation API for the TMD library. So basically it's also a wrapper of TMD and the first two backend are quite similar. And the third one is um, Clojas. Uh, it's a data processing framework with parallel computing on larger than memory data sets. So it's, and, and it's also developed in HQ Business School. And, but uh, it, uh, it had uh, dependence on the, uh, external files so uh, but currently uh data drill don't have a uh, good support for uh, external files so uh we don't have a full support of closeask and the uh, fourth backend is uh gurney or jenny so um it's a data frame library that runs on a page spark and i also uh, make some patch on this um uh, project and we will not cover uh in much detail of these uh, backends and so here is our motivation on creating a uh, data drill. So uh, the first question we uh, should consider is uh, who should use data drill? Uh, and our answer is data drill is designed for novice coders who want to conven conveniently process large scale data. And uh, such users may uh, have uh, uh, the following three problems when uh, using the existing uh, data processing libraries. So the first one is that uh, they may not be good at programming complex data operations. And the second one is that uh, they may be confused with the differences in the APIs of different libraries. And the last one is uh, some of them even may find it difficult to deploy a, a de development environment. So for example, they may find it hard to uh, install closure and may find it difficult to uh, uh, use running gun and use uh, 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 project uh, CLJ to uh, configure their project. So uh, our data drill is uh, designed to uh, tackle these issues. So uh, now how will they benefit from data drill? The first one is uh, uh, data drill supports single query expression. So it can simplify the programming while still ensuring the full expressiveness. The second one is uh, the consistent syntax. It will ensure consistent experience on different backends. So uh, the user may will not uh, uh, be confused about the different APIs. And yeah. And the third one is the full free installation. Uh, so uh, data drill provides a, a, a launcher script. So uh, they can simply uh, run the launcher script to uh, to use data drill and don't they don't they not, don't need to uh, spend too much time to install the entire tool chain of uh, closure and uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, it still need, requires uh, GRE to be installed. And we, are, we have also uh, considered the limitation of data drill. So uh, one bad news is that uh, data drill does not intend to support the full functionality of the uh, backends. But the good news is that uh, this is to ensure the consistency across different backends. So uh, this actually matches our uh, design goals. And the subset we have covered so far is already uh, expressive, expressive enough. Uh, but uh, uh, one bad news is that uh, there are still some uh, slight differences between different backends. And so uh, in the uh, following examples, we are uh, use uh, table close as our uh, default backend. Yeah. So uh, here is the uh, overview of our uh, data drill. And this diagram shows how it works. So basically data drill takes a query expression, 
uh, written in our custom syntax thanks to the uh, uh, powerful uh, macro system of closure. And uh, our data drive will uh, use the macro expansion to uh, freezing it into a closure map containing the arguments of the different operations. And, and, uh, and then we are uh, call the uh, corresponding library functions uh, according to our logical processing order. And finally, we are return the result, uh, which is the uh, updated data table. So uh, the logical processing order of data tree is as follows. So uh, basically it's uh, quite similar to the CDX statement of SQL. Uh, but we have one uh, extra operations, which is the row operation. Uh, it is to uh, select the rows uh, from the data set according to the its index. Yeah, but it's not supported uh, for all backends, uh, but it's supported in table close and data in model data set. So uh, yeah, the order is as uh, follows. It's shown in the right and so here is the syntax. Uh, in data draw, our query statements had three sections, row section, column section, and uh, optional section. Each section is represented by a sequence of, of operations enclosed within a, uh, a pair of square brackets. So uh, the first uh, section, the row selection section, uh, correspond to the uh, where operation, having operation, and the uh, row operation. And the column section operation correspond to the select uh, operation. And the uh, optional section correspond to the um, group by and order by uh, operation. Such syntax is uh, also inspired by uh, R's data table syntax uh, because uh, it, it makes it easier for us to uh, chain and combine different operations. So uh, that is very com convenient and also uh, suitable for a newbie uh, coder. So let's first uh, look at the, the uh, row selection section. So uh, currently we support two kinds of uh, row selection operation. So the first one is uh, by filter. So, mm, so its syntax is as follows. So uh, yeah, so uh, the filter function we pro we specify the column and the, the filter function we want to perform on it. The function can be any custom function retaining a Boolean as a result. And uh, you can also define the function using closures anonymous function literal. Uh, so this example uh, is uh, to uh, uh, select the rows uh, which uh, whose uh, age field is greater than zero. And we also have by index row selection. Uh, so it is supported by table calls, but uh, maybe not supported by uh, closures or uh, journey or granny. And yeah, so we just need to provide the uh, row indexes uh, to the uh, query to the query operation. And to select all rows, we can just leave the section empty. And but uh, it should be noted that uh we can, although we can perform by filter selection and by index selection, we cannot uh, perform both. So if uh, both by filter and by index is provided, uh, we will use the filter to uh, select the, the rows. And uh, the second section is the column selection section. So uh, for regular columns, we can just use the uh, keyword for the uh, column. For example, uh, if there is a column for edge, then we can just write uh, column edge for to select that uh, column. And there are also some uh, aggregated columns uh, uh, because we also support the group by function and we can provide some aggregation function on after that. So um, for ag aggregated functions, we can use uh, the keyword for aggregation and the, the keyword for a uh, column. For example, uh, uh, if you want to uh, get the uh, main edge of each group, we can just write uh, column main, column edge. And the aggregated columns can also be used in the row selection as we shown in the uh, last, last page. So uh, if we want to select the rows with 
啊啊，要啊啊 ，sorry， this is a a wrong example. 啊，要啊 ，to select all columns, we can just leave the selection empty. 啊、uh, ， this is the same as the row selection. And So for the third section is the optional section. Uh, we can perform a uh, group by operation and a sort by operation and the syntax is as uh, is shown here. And similar to a filter function, a sort by function can also be any custom function returning a Boolean as a result. And we can also use a uh, closure built-in operators such as uh, less than or greater than or any other uh, kinds of uh, uh, Comparators, and if you don't need, we don't need to uh, perform any uh, optional operations. We can just leave this section empty or simply omit it. That is, we can just provide the uh, the first two section. And yeah, before we uh perform these uh, query operations, we first need to select the backend. And table close is the default backend of data jar, but we can also uh, select other uh, backend using the set backend function. So uh, for example, if we want to use closures as the backend, we can just call uh, set backend closures. Yeah, but uh, uh, please make sure that uh, we, uh, please don't mi uh, mix this backend together because the uh, internal structure uh, of the data sets may be different. And after selecting the uh, backend, we should create the data set. Usually we, uh, for some large data set, we, they are stored in files. So it is recommended to use the uh, data loading function provided by the backends to load this data. But sometimes we only need to use a small data set to uh, validate an idea. So in that case, uh, we can just use data just data set function uh, to uh, create a data set. For example, we can uh, first uh, write a, a map in uh, data jar, and each key value pair represents the uh, columns. And we can just pass the map into the uh, data set function, and it will uh, generate a data set uh, for the backend. And we can use the print function to print it out. Here is a more complete example. Uh, so first we create a data set and then we pass it to the uh, query, query function and then we print it out. And so in the query function, we first uh, group the, uh, the data by name and age and then sort them by salary. And then we uh, filter these rows and then we choose the, uh, the groups Whose salary, uh, who the sum, of, whose uh, sum of salary is greater than zero, and the uh, age is also greater than zero, and we uh show this uh select these columns, the name, the age, the salary, the sum of salary, and the standard deviation of the salary, and here is the result. And now we are uh show the usage of uh data jar. So first, uh, just like a usual library, we can use DataJar as a library in our project. So we can just add DataJar to the uh, dependencies of the project file. And then uh, we can just require DataJar in the code. And usually we will uh, uh, choose an alias uh, for DataJar uh, as uh, DTJ. And Alternatively, we can also uh, create an empty data jar project from our uh, line again template uh, using the line new common. So uh, this will uh, generate an empty project uh, with uh, the necessary dependencies. Yeah, and it also includes an example of uh, data jar. And yeah, but uh, as we said, the uh, target user of our project is a uh, new bit coder. So they may uh, find, uh, they may don't know how to use uh, Linigan and they may find uh, modifying such a configuration file uh, may be difficult. 
So we also provide a uh, even more easier version to uh use data drill. We have written a launcher script for data drill. Now actually uh two for different operating systems. So uh the launcher script will auto automatically download the latest data drill and necessary dependencies. And after that, uh, the user can simply uh, run data drill in their command line to uh, run a uh, uh, to run the REP of data drill. And they can also uh, uh, run the uh, uh, run the code in a file uh, with data drill. And I think it's a good time for a live demo. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's follow the uh, example of our uh, website. So here is uh, the link and QR code to our website, and you can also find the link in our chat box. So here is our website, and we have a quick start guide in, in our website. So uh, now we, we, we can uh, use our uh, REPL. So here is the script of the launchers. So you may uh, download this script and run, run this script on your terminal, or you can uh, just follow this guide to uh, for Linux users, you can just uh, run this code to uh, install data drill into your uh, system directory. Yeah, so maybe let's, yeah, let's have a try. So, yeah, so it's downloaded. And, and we can install it to the uh, system directory. Yeah, so I think it's now installed. So maybe. Yeah, so now we can see the help function of data drill. And now by uh, run data drill directory. Yeah, so now it starts a uh, uh, REPL session for uh, data drill. Now we can try the uh, examples in our website. So we can see the backend. So yeah, so now we have the table code at the backend. Uh, but the default backend is also table code. Yeah. And now we can create a data set. So now data is a uh, is a map of data, and each uh each key value pair represents a column, and now we can uh turn it into a uh data set. Yeah. Now what you see is the uh data set uh generated uh, created by table code the backend. So now let's try some um, ba basic uh, operations of uh, data drill. So first let's uh, try the first example. It selects rows with uh, salary greater than 300 and selects rows uh, whose age is uh, less than 20. Yeah, as and as you see, we can use the uh arrow operator in closure to uh chain this uh function together. So this is the result. And for the second example, we have used the uh, same data set uh to uh to group the rows uh by age and then uh select the uh sum uh select the groups uh, whose sum of its salary is uh greater than one thousand and then we show the age and sum sum of salary so here is the result so we have uh one group uh whose age is twenty five and the sum of salary is uh four thousand For the third sample, uh, it is uh, quite similar to the uh, second one.
Yeah, here is the fourth example. So, uh, so here, uh, we have shown the case, uh, where, um, uh, the row selection is empty. Yeah, that is, uh, we, uh, show all the rows. Uh, in that case, it actually all the groups. So, uh, because we have uh, uh, two. Yeah, we have two uh, two record for C, and after the the uh group, uh group by operations, they be become the same group. So there are only four records here. And here is the fifth example. And we can also try uh maybe and yeah here is the uh, last example so uh, in this example we uh first select the rows uh whose salary is uh, uh first we should group this uh name group group this uh, records by name and age. So there are four four groups in total, and sold them by salary, and then we filter the uh records whose uh sum of salary uh is uh greater than zero and the uh, age is also greater than zero, and of course we have selected all the uh records, and finally we show the uh column of uh name, age, salary, sum of salary, and standard deviation of salary. So, so or we can use uh, XA to create the RUPL. And in our website, we also have some, some uh, more detailed documentations of, uh, of data drill. And for uh, some differences uh, between different brackets that we have also covered here. Yeah, for example, uh, for uh, Jenny, uh, the uh, filter functions is slightly different from uh, from the table code backend and other backend. We should use the uh, operators provided by Jenny to uh, write the uh, filter function. Yeah. And in the archives, uh, we have some uh, more detailed report about uh, our implementation. So uh, if you are interested, you may also check this uh, post. And here, here is our here is our uh GitHub repository. If you are interested, if you may also check this code. And uh, and yeah, basically this is what I want to share today. And thank you. Thank you so much. That is so inspiring. And, and I guess it is one of the things which are sometimes so difficult to, to implement some kind of generalization on top of a few different libraries which are different from each other. Just finding a common concepts, I believe requires lo lots of thinking and, and this careful process of compromise, right? As you explained, yeah. some compromise was needed so that things would actually work across the different engines. Yeah. And then, you know, it is also this kind of inspiring project of making things easy and readable with a good website and good documentation, all these details, which are often actually a lot of work to make, right? So it is like a good model, I think, for many of us to, to build a good library. And, and, and yeah, and I think, as we said earlier, I think we are hoping to, to practice this in our study groups in the community to try using it. And yeah, uh, is there anything else you wish to uh, uh, tell about uh, DataJo and Claudia ask? Or should we discuss a few questions I may have, or maybe Jeremy has? Yeah, I think maybe at this stage, I can uh, sort of reiterate while we're recording. That for everyone to hear. So, so we're really interested in reaching out to the community. So 
if you have any future requests or you know any ideas or you know some documentation should be more more elaborate or you know whatever it may be uh, i mean seriously feel free to reach out to us we're really looking forward to that thank you yeah thank you so much and uh, i guess what one of the things i'm curious about is the usage of this uh, I understand you you did take a lot of care to make it easy and accessible and and i'm wondering about the people who have used it what was their experience what they have tried doing with it or well, maybe it is an early stage but uh, I think anything about the, the use of this library would be really interesting to talk about. Oh, maybe you wish to tell a little bit about the general use of data processing in your in your teaching, in your research. Mm, actually, I have uh, asked some of my friends to uh, try data job and, and all of them have no previous experience uh, of uh, closure. And they never installed closure and they never uh, and so I just asked them to, to uh, run the uh, launcher script to uh, install the uh, data drawer. And I just asked them to uh, follow the, the uh, examples in the guides and examples in our website. And they find it uh, very easy to use. That is incredible. Yeah, that's really encouraging, isn't it? Right? that people who didn't know Clojure could actually use it. And, and I guess without this additional command line, it would be difficult, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I think I think Yang Ming Tian has spent a lot of uh, efforts to make it user-friendly. So, um, so big thanks, thanks to him, yeah. I think based on my experience, a lot of times, uh, oftentimes people are, uh, it, it's, I think it's not so much of a, library issue but also sometimes a little bit of a language um, barrier uh, where people are just so used to pandas and python and, and so on that uh, when we say okay you know give uh, data true a try you know <laughs> then they they need a little bit of uh, of hand holding and so on uh, to get started with clojure but i think besides that um i think it should be pretty pretty straightforward to uh, to get going um, and another thing what we um what we what we should also uh, maybe look into in the future are more uh, sort of statistical uh, um, you know uh, functionality and, and these kind of things that we that we could add so not just sort of manipulating the data but or managing the data but also to uh, to run some some more statistical functions on it and make you know integrate that maybe deeper into the uh, data drawer. Yeah, and possibly a lot of the things you're demonstrating now here could be an approach for other projects that try to be easy for a new person trying to learn them, right? And, and maybe maybe we can try to learn from what you did in just in all this, all this approach of making it accessible could be like a method to learn from. And and if I understand correctly, it actually installs closure, or maybe not necessarily. Is it compiled already in a certain way so that it doesn't need to install closure when it runs from the command line? Yeah, so uh, actually it uh, packages all the dependencies it needs uh, as a, a, a JAR. So uh, if a user want to use it, uh, if they only want to use the uh, REPL, they may uh, just uh, have uh, the JRE installed and then run the uh, launcher script. Yeah, I see, I see, thank you. Yeah, and then people who may have experience with Python, you mentioned, may have certain expectations, right, about development environment, about where they write their code, maybe in notebooks, about the way they wish to visualize things. And I'm wondering about their response, you know, to the whole experience. So, and maybe this is too early because maybe this is not in use with com combined with data visualization and statistics yet. So maybe 
we should ask this question in the future about the complete experience of a person coming from Python and curious about, about using data to closure. And yeah, and what they might be missing, what they might be looking for when they are looking into this new, this uh, different way of doing things. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I think I think what uh, some people are looking for is sort of like, you know, sort of like one way to do it. So sort of like in Python, okay, you got, you know, pandas and matplotlib and so on, and and that's how you do things, and and then you're good to go, basically, right? But um, but in in, in Clojure, there's so many different libraries, and you can use them in this way or in that way, and and uh, uh, so I think that's that's uh, that's what what's sometimes a little bit confusing for for newcomers. Um, that they don't that they don't really know. Okay, so how do I do? Let's say the same thing I did before in another programming language. So how do I just replicate that very easily in um, in Clojure? Yeah, and maybe uh, uh, data or Clojure ask and so on. So yeah, so I think these are some some things. Yeah, I mean, so we've been um, so as a little side note. Uh, so we've also been working on uh, some other uh, projects. Uh, so we have uh, recently founded the um, Center for Investment Management at the uh, HKU Business School. And so there, uh, one of the RAs wrote a, um, a sort of a, a small closure uh, program that allows students to um, basically track their the trades that they have submitted and uh, plot, it, plot them and so on. And and uh, so, yeah, so he, he's, because many of the students are business school students there. Uh, so he really tries to make it very um, accessible uh, to the students so that the, the barrier to entry is, is really, really low. And uh, yeah, so so I think um, that's uh, that's something we, we probably will continue to work on in other projects as well to make sure that the that it's really easy for for people to get get started with um, with these libraries and and with the language, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it would be great to discuss this more. Maybe after we stop the recording at some point because it might get detailed. Uh, so maybe if you'll have time, we'll think a little bit about it and about how it might be related to other projects which are going on these days. And maybe would you like to say something about when you would recommend using Clojure ask uh, compared to tablecloth, for example, is it mostly about the size of the data, the, the difference uh, between the two in your usage? Yeah, I think it's mostly about the size of the of the data set. Yeah. Um, well, what what do you think, Young Maintian? Do you have any any additional points think, to share um, here? Uh, so, are you talking about Clojure ask or uh, data drop? I think for closed ask, uh, it is more suitable for uh, the cases where uh, the data size is extremely large. So uh, the uh, benefit of using uh, closed ask is that uh, it can handle uh, the data set, which is uh, even larger than the uh, memory. Yeah. So I think it, it is its main advantage. Yeah, thank you. So if I imagine it correctly, uh, if I'm a user of DataJo, then by default, I will begin using it in tablecloth and, and enjoy the flexibility it has with tablecloth. And then at some point, I might, may run into a situation where the data is big and I don't have enough memory. And then I will just switch the engine and run everything from scratch uh, because we cannot mix engines. And then I may lose some flexibility of some functionality but still enjoy most of it with data Joe and Clojure Ask. Is, is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And the backend can be uh, Clojure Ask or Jenny or, you know, pretty much um, anything that can handle these large, large data sets. Yeah. And that, I think that's the key thing, right? So exactly as you mentioned, you can, you can scale it up and you don't have to rewrite your code much uh, once you're, the size of the data gets too large. It doesn't fit in memory anymore. You can just swap the backend, and you're you're good to go. 
Yeah. Have, you, have you been using Genny or is it just like an attempt to support it because you know you know other people may need to use it? I'm imagining Genny and Claude Jask are similar in, in the context one may use them, but maybe are there any differences uh, that we should care about uh, as you? Yeah, I think uh, Jenny is, um, is can handle, I think, even larger data sets because it's it, it's runs on Spark. Um, Clojask so far is more um, single machine. Um, I mean, in principle, I guess we could we could run it on several machines. I think the architecture is is there, uh, but so far we have mostly focused on the single machine um, case. Uh, so I think Jenny would be even be suitable for for larger uh, data sets than. Than, than Clojask, yeah. But uh, Clojask is easy, uh, I, as far as I understand, it should be easier to set up because you don't have to install Spark and all these other things. Um, so so that maybe uh, um, may, may, maybe if the data set is not so large that you need a whole computer cluster, then maybe Clojask may be, may be um, easier to use. Whereas if the data set is really, really large, you need like a distributed file system or so. Um, across different computers then uh i guess um uh, jenny would be would be more suitable yeah yang ming tian what, what do you think because yang ming tian he's been working with the uh jenny uh authors as well to add some patches there uh so let, let's hear from yang ming tian so uh and I, I agree with you yeah yeah thank you and then and then I guess, um, but would you like to say something about the process of creating data, Joe? Thinking about this difficult problem of, of coming up with a good readable API and finding the common concepts between different libraries. What was difficult about this process, uh, creating it? Was it difficult? Was it challenging? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I think uh, actually, uh... The design of the syntax is, is mostly done by the uh, last, uh, the last contributor, and so what I what I have done is basically uh, uh, extending this uh data drill to make it support multiple backends. So uh, some difficulty I encountered is that uh maybe, uh, the uh different backends may support uh different operations. So uh our solution is. That uh, we just uh, limit our uh, functionality into a small subset of this uh of these different backends, and so that we uh we want to uh make the uh make our uh experience uh as, as much uh, consistent as possible, and yeah, and for some uh function that on uh, the uh, backend may not support. Uh, if it is easy to implement, we may try to uh, add some, uh, some personal implement of that function. Uh, so for example, uh, 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 Clojax don't have a, uh, uh, mm, uh, have a, uh, uh, Clojax support a, a smaller range of uh, aggregation functions than uh, table cloth. So uh, I just manually uh, added some uh, more aggregation functions to uh, Clojask. Oh, yeah, I think uh, yeah. I think uh, yeah, I think initially the the main sort of challenge was to to understand the whole macro system and DSL and and how this works. Um, so you know, people always say, "Oh, yeah, with a Lisp, you know, you can create your own." Um, grammar and, and so on but but it, it took us some time to to figure out how all of this uh, works um and uh and this i think the syntax uh was mostly inspired by data table from r uh so i've been working with that before uh quite a quite a bit so i find it very um intuitive to to get a lot of things done in a with very little code so i find that very uh, useful uh, for uh, the data table for for R, um, and you can also chain uh, different operations, and you can sort of combine them in really really nice ways without you know having to write a lot of code and being very verbose. 
Um, and so, uh, so, so we we try to kind of bring that to uh, to closure as well with uh, with Clojask. So, so originally the idea was just to say, you know, can we um, for 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 Clojask, can we maybe write a uh, DSL that has maybe a more intuitive uh, syntax? Um, and so that's what uh, Perry Choi was originally working on. Um, so he, he was the original uh, author of, of this. And um, and so once we had figured out how all of this works with you know macros and all kinds of things, DSL, um, then I think uh, then later uh, Yang Mingtian uh, came on board for this project for Data Tour and uh, extended to different different backgrounds and sort of you know polished everything and made it uh, more production ready. Yeah. So I think uh, if anybody has any, you know, questions about how to write a DSL and all these kind of things, I think the this project is very useful to to look at because because that's exactly what it what it does. So it's sort of like a case study, if you will, uh, of how to write a uh, a DSL for different backends. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a really 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 uh, great example to learn from. Oh, and by the way, hello, Khaled. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we just had the talk uh, about data too, uh, and we are now uh, in the discussion afterwards. And I guess soon, maybe we will stop the recording and chat a little more if you'll have time. And uh, I, I guess um, maybe uh, if I understand correctly, you're all in the business school and it looks like you all do software, but not only software, but also uh, uh, do some research or and studies in the context of finance. And would you like to tell a little bit about that? Oh, hello, Khaled. Nice to meet. Thank you for joining us. Um. Hello? Yeah, so, uh, hello. Yeah. No, sorry, I am. Uh, um, okay. Go on. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, so, yeah, so, so I'm at the business school, uh, but the many of the RAs are from the computer science department. So they are, they are not in the business school, at least for their first major. Some of them may have a second major, let's say finance or so, but, uh, but their home faculty is um, is is not not the not as outside of the business school, yeah. Uh, but I mean, it, it's a it's a mixed bag. So some of the RAs in the past also have been um, at the business school. So uh, so e either way is is fine, yeah. And uh, yeah, sorry. The the question was about the the some some finance research. Yeah. So um, I think from from my side, what I see is that. Um, uh, the the tooling is very important, right? So if you work on a, some kind of, let's say, research question or um, some teaching related uh, things, uh, so what I often realize is that the the tooling is 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 critical because um, if you if you use the wrong tools, then you spend a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, just reinventing the wheel, basically. Um, and so so what I think what we want to do is we want to contribute to uh, to closure uh, to to make it easier to use in a sort of business um, and financial uh, context um, I think that's sort of like the the overarching overarching goal right so so sort of sort of like finance um, data science AI ml you know sort of this intersection maybe fintech a little bit um, so anything that is somewhere there, I think that that would be of interest um, to us, to to make you know the life easier for for those who want to use it in a let's say financial or fintech context, but could also be others. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, maybe I guess maybe in a moment uh, we can say goodbye to the recording. And do any of you wish to say anything more to the part that we share publicly uh, at the recording? Um, any concluding words about the project, about your hopes for the future? 
um, yeah, so again, just to everybody out there, you know, reach out to us. Uh, if you have any questions about our project, uh, DataJour, Clojask, or or others, uh, you can find them on the um, Clojure-Finance um, on GitHub. Um, and yeah, so reach out to us. We'll welcome, we welcome community contribution and exchange and, and, and all of that, the knowledge exchange, yeah, as we call it at the university, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Looking forward to that. And uh, again, thanks, da Daniel, for giving us the chance again to, to come here and uh, share about some of our new projects. Thank you. Thank you so much to all of you for this meeting. It was really lovely. So now we will say goodbye to our listeners and see you on the next time.